My name is Peter Manuelian, and I'm the Philip J. King Professor of Egyptology here at Harvard University. And right behind you, we're seeing a uh, 2D representation of the Giza. Uh, can you talk a little about how this all came about and how Harvard is using this technology to help educate the, the future? Well, we're standing in the Visualization Center in the Earth and Planetary Sciences Division. So you may be wondering what the humanities is doing right here in the sciences. But it's a great merger of technologies and different approaches to archaeology. So behind me is the Giza Plateau. It's the world's first attempt to try to get a complete map and plan and model of the Giza pyramids. Believe it or not, even though this is the most famous archaeological site in the world, there have been many expeditions working here, and there is no one single place to go where you see every temple, every pyramid, and every tomb reconstructed this way. So that's our goal. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. So this uh, facility was at Harvard before I came and started teaching Egyptology here, but we thought it would be a great way to try to bring the students in and expose them to Giza at a scale and in a way that they just can't experience in a regular classroom with uh, lectures and, and traditional PowerPoint slides. So we teamed up with Dassault System, who have uh, been engineering this kind of 3D modeling software for a long time. And using one of their modeling environments, we have built many, many models of Giza tombs and pyramids and even avatars of ancient Egyptians. And we put it all together in this model. So the students come in here. And the great difference between a regular video, a linear movie, is that this is a real-time model. So I can sit behind the console and drive and take them anywhere on the site. So if they have a particular question, we veer off to the left and look at the Sphinx or dive down a burial shaft and look at the grave goods underground. So it gives me, as a teacher, a tremendous flexibility to mold the class in any direction and no two classes are the same. Now we're looking at this in 2D, but talk a little about what 3D adds for the classroom experience. Well, the students are used to video games and, uh, and YouTube and all of that on their little laptop screens, but when they come in here, they see things on a scale that they're just not used to. And for the pyramids, which are hundreds and hundreds of feet high, they really deserve this kind of presentation. So the students come in and they all put on the 3D glasses, and in 3D, we really have an immersive experience that they just can't get almost anywhere else, although we've created a website for this model too, and if you have the glasses at home, you can actually look at it in 3D now through the uh, Dassault website and view Giza in, uh, in 3D right at home. For people that aren't here, this looks like a, a miniature IMAX theater. How big is the screen that, that people are going to be able to watch this at in uh, the classroom? Well, this room holds oh, anywhere between 12 and 20 people comfortably, and it's a large uh, circular 23-foot screen. And there are two projectors that are, are blended and they merge and they create the 3D image. So with the 3D glasses turned on and when we're in 3D mode, it's a pretty powerful experience and you really feel like you're roaming between the columns and diving down burial shafts and enjoying the site. Can you talk a little about how realistic this simulation is and how you have gone over to Giza to capture a lot of this uh, and recreate it in this uh, simulation? Sure. Where this simulation differs from your average video game is that we've actually tried to base it on real archaeology. So between 1905 and 1947, there was a long-running expedition called the Harvard University Austin Museum of Fine Arts Expedition, directed by George Reisner. He lived basically nowhere else. This was his home, and a place called Harvard Camp was the dig site to the west of the pyramids. And he worked at 23 other sites as well, but here at Giza was his main headquarters. So over those 40 years, he took thousands and thousands of glass plate photographic negatives, thousands of pages of notes, diaries, architectural plans, drawings, and other recording systems. And our work is based on all of that work. So for 10 years, we were involved with the Andrew Mellon Foundation to scan, digitize, database all that material and link it all together as a scholarly research tool. And the next logical extension of all of that traditional data work is to move into the 3D space and try to link all this material together. So while the students may experience some high production values in, in a world of uh, Warcraft and other types of video games, this is real stuff. And so it tends to excite them because they're actually looking at uh, real archaeological data moved into the 3D immersive space. What are some of the things you've been able to actually learn from these simulations? Well, I think relationships are what come to the fore when you're able to view Giza in this kind of 3D environment. And by that I mean just how big the pyramids are, 
where these streets and alleyways of master batoons have been built, the large ones, the small ones, and then more importantly, the matrix relationships are so key to studying these archaeological sites. That means, how do they stand next to each other? Which came first? Which came later? How are they contiguous? And by seeing the whole model and all of Giza together, you can start to get a feel for those relationships. And you can get a sense of what's above ground and what's below ground, because every Giza tomb has both of those components. They usually have a superstructure and a chapel above ground with inscriptions and offering places for the cult of the deceased. And then down a burial shaft, underground, there's a burial chamber. And that's where the coffin or sarcophagus is and the mummified body. And so we can dive underground and do things that no mortal can do. We can rotate around in the bedrock and get a real sense of the architecture.